Many people dream about living on an island. The expectation? Living a better or less stressful life away from the hustle and bustle of the big cities with a lot of traffic and pollution. Escaping cold temperatures lying on the beach at any given day seems to be a dream for many of us. So maybe you're asking yourself, how is it to live on an island? In this video I'm going to give you my perspective of how it is to live in the biggest of the four Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean part of Spain, Mallorca. Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm already living five years on this beautiful island and I thought this is a good reason to explain you the disadvantages and advantages of living in Mallorca, Spain. So, one of the biggest advantages and probably reason number one for people to relocate to an island like Mallorca, I think it's very obvious to see. I don't know why that is, but the sea gives me the feeling of freedom. Maybe because you can look so far, seeing the birds flying around, all the sailor ships and boats traveling through the world. It's just great if you can go to the beach before your work, during the day, after your work, sitting there listening to the waves, just reading a book and enjoying the sun. On the other hand, having only water around you makes you feel the borders very close. I know it's kind of contradictory to what I've just said before, but I guess it's a down and upside at the same time. You can't just leave the island and drive to another city of Spain very quickly. You're kind of stuck in one space, or in this case, one piece of land. You always have to drive to the airport and take a plane to see other places, which brings me to my next point, which is the infrastructure of the island. The island is very well connected, so in case you want to travel to other countries, which at some point you want to do, the most European capital cities are reachable within three hours and cities like Barcelona or Madrid from the mainland of Spain are reachable within one hour. Prices are very cheap thanks to the low-cost airlines. If you register as a resident of the Balearic Islands of Spain, you get a 75% discount on the airline fares to the mainland of Spain. I think this is pretty amazing. It's very cheap to fly. Yeah, it's so cheap. Sometimes it's cheaper than uh, going for dinner. <laughs> Public transport in general is very good. Many people complain about it, but I really don't understand why. Because you have buses from the city center to the northern part of the island. You can go to the southeast or southwest. You have many, many routes. You can go with the bus as well to remote beaches. But obviously, if you're here for longer, I really recommend that you buy a car so you can drive to all the remote beaches and colors. Colors are beaches within rocks. They are so beautiful. To many of them, you have to drive, let's say between 30 and 60 minutes. Sometimes you still have to walk a bit, 20 minutes or more to get there, but it's always worth it. And it's really cool if you have a car so you're independent and yeah, you can reach all the places you want to reach. The city of Palma is one of its kind and with a population of around 400,000, it has a pretty decent size. Walking through its old town and getting lost in its narrow streets always feels like a new discovery tour. There's always something new to explore, be it restaurants, new shops or whatever it is, you always have the kind of feeling. Oh wow, I haven't seen this before. In case you're into architecture, it's definitely a place for you. There are many beautiful and interesting buildings like the Casa Sayas building in the old town, the cathedral, the royal palace of Almudaina or the gardens of the cathedral. Usually the weather is great on the island, unfortunately not today, but we are in winter season. We usually have more than 300 sunny days during the year. I decided to go for a hike today. We are in Delta, a beautiful area in the southern part of the island. Winter is just a great time in general to go on hikes and connect with nature. And often you see a lot of animals like goats, sheep or donkeys. It's very easy to find them. More in the Tramontana Mountains than here in the southern part of the island. The Tramontana Mountains are located on the west side. It's actually very easy to get there. It doesn't matter where you live or you, where you stay in a hotel if you're here on holidays. It's actually not much more than an hour. It's a good time. I really enjoy it. It's more quiet, of course. It's not like in the dynamic cities, but it's just island life. So you have to get used to it. There are not many places where you have all this. It's just beautiful. One good thing about winters in Mallorca, apart from being very short, are the mild temperatures. You still have between 15 and 20 degrees during the day, so you can walk around in a shirt or without a jacket, which I think, being from Germany, is pretty amazing. And even during the night, of course, it's a little bit colder, it's between 5 or 8 degrees, but it's still pretty okay compared to, to other countries in, in Europe or the mainland of Spain. On the other hand, the summer season obviously is very different. It can get 
really hot. During the high season month, July and August, we can have between 35 and 40 degrees. Everyone wants to go to the beach. There's so many beaches with crystal clear green and turquoise water. So it's very worth to go there. But I really recommend to go there early in the morning between 8.30 and let's say 10.30 or 11 because afterwards it's just too crowded. But I mean, if you're living here the full year or during the whole season, I wouldn't worry about that because you can still go in September and October, which are actually my favorite month and still enjoy the sea and have beautiful sunny days. And the beaches will be much less crowded than yeah, during the summer months. The island is known for its own almonds, figs, olives, oranges, wine and so much more. I'm actually right now in front of the market in Santa Catalina where you can buy a lot of fruits and vegetables and eat tapas and it all comes from local farmers. So I really recommend that place. Let's go inside and see what I have to offer. You know, this finca. Do you want Una fresita, una pere de aquí, de esa pobla. Claro, la pruebo. Por supuesto. <laughs> Gracias. A lo que puedes probar. Qué bueno. Muy bien. Pues ya tenemos esto, Patrick. ¿Algo más, caballero? Eh, no, está bien. ¿Está bien por, por hoy? Está bien. Pues, ver, está bien. Gracias. Mamá. Hola. <laughs> Gracias. Very good. So many foreigners who come to the island, myself included, have the kind of feeling that the local people are a little bit more close-minded. Don't get me wrong, they can be very nice and I met a lot of kind Mallorcan people. But yeah, it's just the, the feeling that they are not very keen to connect or to amplify their circle. Maybe because they already have the amount, the amount of friends they want and they don't have the need to search new friends or connect with other people. But actually there's one exception, one guy called Oscar, he's from Mallorca and he created a group called Connect Lingos. They organize events for students, young travelers or people who work here as well. They do hiking trips, Spanish classes, dancing classes, language exchanges. So in case you are interested, I leave the link below in this description of the video. So yeah, go ahead and check them out. It's worth it, it's a very nice community. There are many international people living here and many other expat groups to join to make new friends but to be honest sometimes it's very difficult to keep those people as long-term friends because many of them they are just here for a few months to enjoy the island or to work in the summer season in the hotel industry or another tourism job and many of them they leave after the season or maybe they stay from one till three years and then they leave the island again and go somewhere else so yeah for many people it's just a temporary place this is one of the biggest downsides of living here and I'm struggling with that a lot my friends are great and I'm very happy to have them but my circle of friends is rather small and I wouldn't mind to have more friends to stay a longer time here the lack of interesting jobs and the amount of companies might be the cause for many people for not staying longer on the island. People are here because of the lifestyle and to enjoy the island, not because of their career aspirations. Most of the jobs are within gastronomy, the hotel sector, tourism, the yachting industry or real estate. So I would say it's not really a place to build or to join big companies or startups where you can meet a lot of interesting people and make a lot of connections. In case you want to start your own business or work as a freelancer like myself you would have to pay 300 euros a month and pay taxes on everything you earn. To sum it up the job market is a clear disadvantage to me. It's very difficult to find a highly paid job. Many people struggle with that but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. In case your career path is working in the hotel sector, real estate, the yachting industry or the tourism in general it would be a very place for you. But if you look for many opportunities, many possibilities and a variety of companies, probably a bigger city would be a better place for you. This is a big topic and I don't want to get too much into detail because obviously your costs depend very much on where you live. Palma is expensive and a decent one bedroom apartment may be between 600 and 1000 euros. That's why many people prefer to share an apartment. But obviously this depends very much on your income. If you have a highly paid job and can afford yourself to live alone, you wouldn't have that problem. In general, there's always more demand for apartments and houses than available on the market. So that's why the prices are in general very high. 
During the summer season, rental prices usually explode and it's very difficult to find a room under 400 euros. In case you want to buy a property, prices depend very much on the area within town. It's very difficult to find something worth the money, so in case you are looking for something inexpensive, I would recommend you to look around 30 minutes from Palma or even further out. Furthermore, since the search usually takes a lot of time, I would recommend you to start looking around six months or even a year in advance. Ending this video, I want to leave you with one of my favorite reasons of living here. The colors of the island are just spectacular. So one of my favorite things to do is to go out with my friends and see some sunsets and sunrises. The last hour of the sun is just so beautiful to get your camera on your phone out and take some beautiful pictures and let the sun shine into your face. I hope after watching this video you've got an idea of how it is to live on this island. So my question for you is, could you imagine living in Mallorca? Please leave me a comment under this video and let me know what you think, I'm very curious to know. If you've liked this video I would appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to support my channel please hit the subscribe button. It's for free and it would help me out a lot because the YouTube algorithm likes that. I wish you a nice day or happy evening and I hope to see you in the next video.